good morning. Uh, my name is Joe Blumberg, and I'm the executive director of the Men's Health and Wellness Center. I want to welcome you this morning to the second of our cooking demonstrations that are part of our Eating to Live segment of the Men's Health and Wellness Center. We take eating to live seriously because we believe that what we ingest definitely helps us prolong or shorten our life, as the case might be. We're trying very hard, especially with men, to emphasize the fact that they don't have to stop eating the foods that they like to eat, but they can think about preparing them in a different way in order to minimize the fat content or to provide them with more nutrition, the vitamins and minerals that are so essential that uh, we, we don't cook them out of the food in the way we prepare our food. And I am pleased this morning to offer as our guest speaker, Josh Wodowitz. And Josh has been uh, with me on one of the podcasts that I do as part of our men's health radio program. He is a, what I call a celebrity chef. To me, anybody who appears on a TV program in any kind of a chef role is a celebrity chef. But Josh also is a private chef and does prepare dinners and is also in the catering business providing certain types of um, uh, meals for a number of pro celebrities. Some are in the athletic community whose names you would know. But the important thing is that he is well recommended, that he is someone who has come to us with good credentials, and I have gotten to know him briefly uh, during the course of the last year, and I'm pleased to say that he is now a part of our program here with Eating to Live at the Men's Health and Wellness Center. So with that, Josh, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, my name is Josh Wodowitz. I am actually a, a private chef for an NBA player. Um, I also do dietary planning for uh, people with basically some health issues or if they have anything that they're allergic to, uh, try and design uh, different menus and uh, meals for them that will incorporate, incorporate uh, foods that they enjoy. I know people that have uh, different kinds of um, health issues, have trouble trying to find foods that they enjoy and going through and going through the supermarket and being able to come up with ideas of what to prepare for dinner. So some of the things that I have uh, today uh, I'm going to prepare is a quinoa salad. Uh, it's basically some roasted vegetables and a uh, whole grain, uh, which is prepared kind of like rice. Quinoa is um, a whole grain that is high in protein. Um, it's cooked basically like rice. It uh, takes about 15 minutes. Uh, very easy. It's a, like a two to one ratio. Uh, so if you have one cup of quinoa, it's uh, two cups of cooking liquid. You put it all in the pot at the same time. You can use either stock, vegetable stock, or chicken stock. Uh, season the water, a little bit of salt and pepper and it takes about 15 minutes. Uh, it'll become translucent uh, when, it's, when it's done. Then you take it out, and for the purpose of today, just take it out. You can put it in a pan, let it cool down, and then while that's cooling down, what I have prepared uh, is some roasted vegetables. Uh, I've cut zucchini, squash, uh, roasted, fire-roasted red pepper, uh, roasted corn, some asparagus, and some fresh, um, Chop herbs along with uh, some pistachio nuts. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the quinoa. I did a red quinoa and a white quinoa. There's also a uh, black quinoa. Uh, and one of the important things about making quinoa is before you cook it, it needs to be rinsed off because um, if you cook it without rinsing it, it'll become, there's a bitter taste that arrives and it's not very pleasant. Uh, and this just makes it a lot more palatable if you do rinse it off. Um, so today, some of the, I wanted to give you some instruction on some of the vegetables that I did roast off. Uh, the zucchini and the squash. Uh, 
what where all your your vitamins and protein are in this in the zucchini and squash is in the skin and actually to prolong the life of of this product um, once it's in the salad and when you if you want to hold on to it for a day or two is to basically trim around the edges and just what you want to do is you want to be able to cut up the skin of the product and you're going to cook that off the seeds and the internal part of the zucchini or squash is something that will go uh, bad a lot faster than the external part. So we would kind of discard all that. And what you do is just cut these up into uh, uniform pieces. And at which point you would just take it in a pan. Uh, how I did this was in a, in a pan is a tiny bit of olive oil. Heat it up until it starts to haze. And hazing is when there's a little bit of smoke coming off the pan. You'll put your product in. Um, and you just want to saute it for a minute or two. It'll get a little bit of color. It's called caramelization. And then you want to take it out. And it'll carry over cook. Put it in on, on a plate or another pan. And that will carry over cook enough but it, for it to be palatable. But you will not lose all the vitamins and all the essential um, positive things about the vegetable for your body. Um, so that's why I went ahead and did with the zucchini and squash. The corn, what I did is if you buy, when you buy the corn, you take it and it's in the husk. What I do with that is I just take it and put it in uh, on a pan and put it in the oven at about 400 degrees. And that's going to take about 20 to 25 minutes. If you leave it in the husk, normally people, what they'll do is they'll boil it. They'll strip it down and boil it. And what that does is it, it makes the flavor a lot less and it takes out, lets a lot of the things, uh, the positive things about corn escape into the water. Um, this, what it does is leaving it in the husk will actually steam it in the husk and it will make the flavors more intense. So then it takes about 20, 25 minutes and you know it's done because you'll start to smell it. Um, so what I did with that is I take it out, um, peel off the husk when it's still warm, put a, rub a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and then just put, grill it off a little bit, put a couple some grill marks on it to give it some more flavor. Um, the asparagus, uh, what I do with asparagus uh, is I will take it and just cut the bottoms off of it. When you get a whole bunch, just cut the bottoms off. It's a kind of a woody part, the white part. We'll get rid of that. And the skin of asparagus is very stringy, and it has a bad mouthfeel. So what I do is I actually take the asparagus and peel it like a carrot. If you just lay it down and peel off the skin. And the rule is if it's thicker than a pencil, Peel it. If it's thinner than a pencil, then you don't need to, because the skin will be tender enough to be able to for your palate. So uh, what I'll do is I'll peel them, and then I'll have some uh, salted boiling water, and I'll put the asparagus in there just for maybe 30 seconds. And what the salt does, it's going to retain the chlorophyll that's in the asparagus, so it's going to make it a bright green. Um, so after about 30 seconds, you can take it out and put it in some ice water and shock it. And what that does is it stops the cooking process, and it will make the vegetable retain the green color. So then you can take that out. I just chop those up with, uh, into pieces, the tips and every, everything. Um, then I also took a, a red pepper. And what I did with that was just put it on top. Of, we have a gas stove. Um, put it on top of the flame and, wait, and charred all the skin on the outside. And then once it's all black, you can take it off and put it in a Ziploc bag or in a bowl and then cover it with plastic or, or tighten up the Ziploc bag and let it steam. It'll steam itself for about 10 or 15 minutes, at which point you can take it out of the bag and the skin will just come right off. And then you can do it underwater if it's still warm so you don't burn your fingers. Uh, take that out, take the seeds out, and cut that up into uniform pieces such as the zucchini and squash. Um, then also, I did some uh, fresh parsley, just chopped up, just base, make sure that it's rinsed off. Uh, because usually parsley, curly parsley especially, will uh, retain some sand and grittiness. So you want to make sure that it's well rinsed. And at which point you just take off the stem and chop it up. Um, today I had prepared both kinds, of, two kinds of quinoa. I had prepared a white quinoa and a red quinoa. There are three kinds. There is also black quinoa. 
Uh, they're, they're basically cooked the same amount of time. The red just takes a little bit longer. It also has a more of a woody, um, earthy flavor to it than the white quinoa. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some of the red quinoa. And we'll take some of the white quinoa. And these, these have been um, basically cooked and put out on a tray and cooled down, as I had said. And what I did at that point was I would sprinkle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, um, sea salt, and then uh, smoked black pepper. The sea salt I use, uh, it's a much cleaner flavor than uh, iodized salt. Iodized salt is just straight salt, and it's pretty much horrible for you. Uh, for any kind of cooking, I would definitely recommend sea salt or I would use kosher salt. Uh, my preference is uh, sea salt. It takes a little bit more, but it's, it, what it does is it brings out the flavor of the food more than like iodized salt. Iodized is just gives you that salt flavor. This will actually accentuate the flavors of the food. So right now what I do is add a little bit more extra virgin olive oil. This is a smoked black pepper. Uh, basically what it does is they'll, they'll use an, an apple wood um, and then they'll put it in a, and we'll basically smoke it in a pan and it gives it a lot more flavor.